Hello everyone, welcome back to Author Journey. My name is CJ Anaya. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button super fast so that you will be notified of when I upload new content because we are talking about marketing, we're talking about writing, we're talking about publishing, and today we are talking about writers conferences and I've done one uh, video about these conferences before and that was when I went to the um, 20 books to 50k conference in Las Vegas last year right around this time actually now, to, now that I think about it um, and right now I just yesterday I got back from the American Night Writers Association conference so I went to ANWA um, and thoroughly enjoyed everything about it I really really recommend that, that you go to these conferences. There's, there's plenty that you can learn in college, but a lot of it is very general. You don't necessarily hone in on uh, different aspects of writing fantasy, middle grade, women's fiction. Um, what, what I find mostly when you're getting a degree in, in at least what I've talked to most people, um, when they get a degree in, in writing or in English, it's, it's, it's generally very broad, even when they are, are um, getting a degree with fiction and, and novel writing. There's a lot of creative writing going on and they learn quite a bit, but this is all very specialized and so you can really get detailed and figure out the niche that you want to write in. You can figure out how to outline a romance as opposed to outlining a mystery and figure out all these different elements that play into it. You understand marketing and publishing, but you're also exposed to different aspects of publishing, uh, whether it's traditionally publishing your book or self-publishing. You can figure out what works for you, what's going to work best. You're going to meet agents, you're going to meet publishers, you're going to be able to pitch your book to really um, wonderful people who can get your book in the hands of publishers if that's the route you want to take. So the, the networking and the relationships and just being with people who are just like you, it's, it's stellar, it's wonderful. So I kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about who was there, um, just talk about a few classes and the things that I learned. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because this is their intellectual property um, so I'll just give you a brief idea of what the classes were about uh, because um, you do need to pay money to go and it's important to do that because these people are taking the time to teach you um, and it is part of their profession as well so it's very important that we don't steal money from those who 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 are using this as a as a way to to make a living but also to to share things with you so we want to be able to give back in that way so that we can continue learning from these people who know all of these things that we want to know so the first person I want to talk about is Sarah M. Eden and I've actually talked about her and I've given a class on some pointers that I learned from her and, and from various other um, romance uh, classes that I've taken but she is just fabulous. She's fabulous because she does amazing research on her historical romances. She's fabulous because while the research is, is incredibly data driven because she actually has a degree in that in, in research and she's just so amazing. Um, she also writes the most amazing, wonderfully constructed romances. They're always so spot on and I'm always very impressed with the way she, she blends the historical and the romance together. So I have my I have my Anwa booklet. This was so helpful because it had all the classes and then it had um, summaries and synopses of of what the classes were about so I could really decide what I wanted to do. Um, she taught a class called Seven Point Romance Structure. So what she did was she took um, this idea of the seven point um, structure that she had learned from a, another um, amazing author and she was trying to apply it to romance and she found that when she applied it to 30 different romances it, it didn't quite work that there actually were a few points within it that needed to be added so she came up with the nine point structure for romance and she shows how you can use a seven point structure as part of like the secondary aspects of of your romance novel and then use the nine point structure to to really get into uh, developing those relationships and and the pulls and 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 pinches, I guess you could say, what deters your your um, 
hero and your heroine from each other and what pulls them together and, and how you can structure that. So anything from Sarah, especially when it comes to romance, I always go to her classes because I know I'm going to learn something fabulous and new. And anything that I, I already know, it's, it's just going to be wonderful review. So there's always something new to learn. I really, I highly recommend that if you write straight romance, and I'm not, I'm not talking about erotica, although erotica still can use all of these points. I'm just talking, um, I'm talking just straight romance, period. Uh, you know, all of these things, all of these techniques that she utilizes will work for any romance. It doesn't matter what subgenre it's in. Um, Sci-fi romance, urban fantasy with a hint of romance, mystery with romance. If you can apply these this, this structure to the romance that you develop, whether it's the main plot line or the subplot, um, then it's going to to resonate much better and come across the page much better. So you need to go, you need to read her books. This is all about research. You need to read a lot in order to write well. That's just how it is. Study the way other authors do these things, the way other successful authors who are very good at their craft uh, write these romances. Study how she's able to bring that tension to the forefront without there being a ton of physicality involved right away. Um, so she's just the best at building that tension and, and really drawing you in and developing these characters and, and developing this connection that these characters have to each other, especially during historical times where that physicality was not as prominent as it is now. Some people might say that that must be harder, and it is. <laughs> it's harder to utilize that and to do that, and so it's so important to learn how to do it. So check her out, and I'm putting a huge plug in for her because I, I just think that if you are a romance writer, she is someone you need to study. Even if you don't write historical, you need to study the way she puts together a romance. You will learn so much just by reading her books. Okay, another fabulous person who taught another fabulous class, Josie Kilpack writes historical romance, um, but she also writes cozy mysteries. And so she did a really great class on the, the, the construct um, or the structure of mysteries. Put a lot of really fabulous things in there. So if you'll take a look at, at hers, she's got, you know, the lemon tart, uh, English trifle, the, just these really cute uh, names for her, her cozy mystery series. So for anyone interested in mystery, she's also a good one to go to. And, and anyone else who writes cozy mysteries or hard-boiled mysteries or noir mysteries, there, there are so many subgenres within the mysteries. Figure out what niche you want to do and, and go read those books because it will help you to see the structure. You'll start seeing similarities. But she taught a stellar class on that as well. So I really enjoyed Josie's class. It was very succinct. It was very to the point. And, um, and, and, and Angie, for any of you who have read my Healer series, Angie's a secondary character in that. And I'm going to be writing a spinoff series soon. I keep saying soon. It's coming soon because I've had all these projects hit me. But I am going to be writing it, and it is going to be a mystery. And so I've really started to study the way you structure mystery so that I can nail that right because it's very different from romance. So, so I'm excited about that. This author here is... Regina um, Sorois, and, and you, you cannot find a nicer person on this planet. She got her start with On Little Wings. Okay, so I met her just after she had written On Little Wings um, and she, because she submitted it to the Amazon Breakthrough um, Book Awards. And it's a huge book awards that, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's still going on, but they do it every year because Amazon's looking for a new author to promote. And she won that sucker. She won the whole thing. Um, so she came to Anwa a few years back. I think it was in 2012 or 2013 when she, um, when she won that. And she came and gave this huge keynote speech on, on the process that she went through um, what she did, how she submitted it, just how how she had wanted to give up um, and how she had pushed through and submitted last minute to this Amazon Breakthrough Book Award. She almost didn't do it because she was scared and she ended up winning. So it was a beautiful story of believing in yourself, of, of, of writing even though you're afraid, writing even if you're scared, um, which incidentally was was a huge part of the keynote speech uh, at, at Anwa today, it was it was not given by Regina. It was given by someone else. Um, but the themes were the same. That that success um, 
has it doesn't necessarily have to do with with talent in the beginning if you continue to polish and to get better and to improve on on the innate abilities that you have then then success is going to depend on you being persistent and passionate and continuing to pursue what you love even if you're afraid even if you feel insecure even if you think that nobody will want to read what you're writing it's all about putting yourself out there and continuing to learn even if you are not the best writer in the world. And as I've said before, you can always learn, you can always polish, you can always progress, and you can always get better. And so if Regina had not pushed through her fears, she would not have won that book awards. She wouldn't have, have landed a publishing deal. Um, and now she's actually self-publishing. She really finds that she enjoys that a little more than the traditional publishing um avenue but again to each his own you're going to discover as you go through this process that you maybe would like to be self-published or maybe traditionally publishing your book is the way to go it just depends on what you want but she's fabulous she taught a really wonderful class that I was able to take on description talked about how it's so important for us to use the senses when we are going to write a book to use um, smell and taste and touch to transport a reader into a scene, which can be very hard to do. And to be honest with you, when I write a rough draft, I don't do that at all because it, it stops my flow. But it is one of those nuances, those, those things that I like to add into my books as I'm going through my second, third, possibly my fourth pass with it. I, some, there are just some things where I think to myself, okay, this pass through, I'm going to focus on sensations and, and, and using hearing and, and, and touching and tasting and feeling to um, enhance scenes and to enhance moments to really draw the reader in. And you just kind of pepper it in throughout your novel. Because if I have to think about doing it right then and there, I it just, I, I stumble. So I write really crappy, crappy rough drafts first. <laughs> My rough drafts are always really awful. And that's when I start adding these things in. But it was, it was something I hadn't considered before where she talks about. Um, um, taking away one of your senses to consider how you would transport someone into that scene. Uh, so very, very cool. Do you add another cool thing that you can learn at a writing conference? Okay. Um, oh, is this, this the same thing? It is the same thing. Okay, let me take that off right there. Okay. So I think I've gone over three people who I, they were just fabulous. Another person who was there <laughs> was was Adam Berg. And I think I've talked about Studio C before on this channel. I'm not sure. I love Studio C because it is a sketch comedy show. And the reason why I love this is because they it's very difficult to... I think it's very difficult for authors to write blurbs and descriptions. We've written a huge long book, but we think, oh my gosh, how can I sum things up in a tiny you know, little blurb? These folks are writing sketches that are so difficult because it's a very tiny section of material that they're writing that's going to be very funny, that of course has a beginning, middle, and end, and they always do it in such a family-friendly way and such a funny way, and it's just a good time. So Adam Berg, I I've been following Studio C for a long time. They've been going on for nine seasons now, um, and so they have a whole episode that they show on BYU TV. Uh, but they will post episodes, uh, little snippets and sketches here on YouTube. So you really need to look them up if you have never seen them before. They're very good with comedic timing. I like to study the dialogue and the beats and the timing because it helps me when I write dialogue. And I know that may sound weird, but I've been doing that for so long, just studying the way that they write um, their dialogue, studying the way that, what makes it funny? How is it funny? Why is it funny? Because I like to add humor in my books. So these are fun people to, to look at and to follow and to learn from. And, and they are writers. They may not be writing a novel, but that it's, it, writing is writing. And if it brightens someone's day, then that is all that matters. And so I enjoy Adam immensely. Um, I just want to show you a little snippet of this. I don't want to like copyright anything, but Dude, I want to share this. It's what hilarious. are you even supposed to be? This wasn't part of our plan. Uh, yes, it was. We all agreed to dress like our favorite character. That's Adam. Wait, Adam, since when is your favorite character Shirley Temple's demented spirit animal? <laughs> okay, you guys need to accept this. I am a brony. Wait. <laughs> You mean like that gross Italian deli meat? No, that's bologna. 
Oh, oh, okay, like The Rock used to say. No, that's jabroni. Oh, like this part of a buff guy's leg. No, that's a bro's knee. I'm a brony, a man who watches My Little Pony. Adam has gotten a lot of mileage from that. Um, he was able to come to Anwa, and he was the MC. He was so fun, and he was so funny, and I was so fangirling, you don't even know. But this is one of my most favorite sketches. Um, I... <laughs> I enjoy this one so much. He's And he's written quite a few that are really, really funny. So if you've never heard of Studio C and you're working with, with humor in dialogue, watch them just, A, because they're funny and very entertaining, um, but also because it will really help you with um, analyzing humor and beats and, and how you should write your own dialogue and just make it really funny if you're struggling with that. So I just wanted to show you a really fun picture I took with him. Um... <laughs> <laughs> there he is, and me, yay, at Anwa. It was so exciting. So uh, I I did inform him. I put on here that he doesn't know it yet, but we are now besties. After I posted that, I did inform him that I claimed bestie status. He was totally fine with that. Whew. Yay, so that's totally fine. We are now besties officially. Um, so I just wanted to share these really, really cool things with you. I also took a dialogue workshop um, I took a historical research class with Sarah M. Eden. So, so this woman right here, she actually did a second class on researching, how to do research, resources that you can find. Because up until this point, my, my level of research really included, you know, just trying to find things through Google and then look up books on Amazon and then order them the hard way. Like I didn't have any idea what other avenues I could, I could go to if I really wanted to study. And I'm going to have to do this very, you know, soon because I, I'm going to need to study the Revolutionary War in order to write one of my paranormal romances that is in the works right now. So the Revolutionary War is really going to be key in that. And I don't want to write it and just look like a complete and total loser because I have no idea if my facts are accurate. So it was really helpful. You can get really specialized like this. Um, I always recommend for, for this for this particular writing um, conference, it, it wasn't as specific as you could get if you went to solely a romance writing conference or solely a mystery writing conference because they're only going to focus on that specific genre and then you get detailed and specialized even more. So I really want to try, I, I want to join the Romance Writers Association of America. Is that, or Amer I'm going to have to look that up. Don't quote me on that because I don't think that's the name of their, their writing association. But I need to join one and go to one that is purely about romance because I've been writing more and more of those lately. Uh, so that's something that really is exciting to me. So I hope that this has motivated you to start looking into writers' conferences. Plus, I always want to share with you the things that I've learned and what I'm doing to propel my author journey forward because there will never be a moment in my life where I say, okay, I'm done learning. That's just never going to happen. I want to attend at least one or two of these conferences a year because you can always improve and there's always new things to learn and there's always people to meet and relationships to cultivate and networking to be had. So I, I, I made some new friends at this conference. Um, I made, I, I just learned so much and I had so much fun and I wanted to share it with you guys. So make sure that you start researching writers conferences. And if you have found any conferences that you've attended that you just love, please put them in the comments below. Just mark them off or, or put a link there. Mention the things that you've learned. Mention the things that you love about them and get involved in this conversation. And if you liked the video, then please hit the like button and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.